Hi, Tony. Hi. <laughs> Magic. It, it works. I have my phone plugged in. I, I'm charging it. I got about 90% uh, uh, battery power. So I, I, there's enough here to get along with. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you doing? Yeah, well, listen, now that I'm self-isolating, of course, in my studio, um, my hair is growing long. <laughs> my, my, my waist, my, my belly is getting bigger and bigger. I'm not getting exercise, but hey, I'm getting a lot of work done. So that's good. And I know you're working on something special. So you're going to show it. Yes, I am. I've been working on, on uh, uh, I've been, I went to Monument Valley back in October last year. I decided to take a road trip uh, because I, it was right at the top of my bucket list. I needed to go to Monument Valley. And uh, I went up there for a few days and I didn't take any paints with me, just a little bit of ink and gouache and loads and loads of sketchbooks and lots of pencils and markers. And I spent every single day sketching and uh, getting reference material ready for uh, coming back to the studio and making uh, uh, um, big paintings of Monument Valley. It's a big place, it needs big paintings. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, how big do you usually paint? So, like, uh, what are you calling big painting? Well, at the moment, uh, I, uh, about 26 by 24 by 26 inch. Uh, but I have uh, got some big 40 inch UART. I, I've been painting on UART. Uh, I love UART. And I've been painting on the dark, the blank UART. Oh, I love it. It makes uh, colors more vibrant. It really it makes everything pop out. Uh, yeah. Oh, and so I have uh, I have some big 40 by 30 paintings of Monument Valley, um, but they're they're being framed at the moment, so I can't show you. But but the next size down, of course, is the uh, is the 26 or 20 something by 24, something like that. And uh, the painting uh, you kindly let us use to announce this live is uh, Scotland Highlands. And is it also on UART? Uh, that's on UART. The one that's featured on your, uh, that, you, that I sent to you, um, that is on blank UART. Um, I, I've recently moved to Scotland in the last six weeks. So oh. I'm in my new home and my new location and my new- Congratulations. And uh, uh, that scene that I sent to you, that's, um, uh, that's in Glencoe, which is, about 45 minutes drive from here. It's not a, it's not a long distance, but um, it, it takes me about an hour to get to the Highlands. And once I'm up in the Highlands, there's an awful lot to explore up there. This is a breathtaking piece. And we have a lot of people joining us saying hi. I'll gonna wave them in a second. And let me reintroduce myself. I'm Dasha Jamieson with Red Rock Pastel Society of Nevada. And uh, we're promoting our online exhibition. Uh, you have till midnight Pacific on April 25th to enter. And today I'm talking to our newest member. Hi, <laughs> Tony. Tony Elaine. Uh, we have so many fans among our members and so many artists whom I interviewed prior name you among the people whom they look up to. So there, there is no pressure. Now, if you'll decide to enter exhibition, like no pressure at all. <laughs> well, that's very kind of you. That's very, I, I, thank you so much for the, for the compliments. That's, that's uh, I, I feel, that makes me feel good. <laughs> it's what I'm here for. So um, yeah. my, uh, my board love you and they have a collection of your paintings at their houses. I'm not gonna show them because like we're not, we're not here to talk about their nice art collections, but they also been at IAP's presentations uh, and they <laughs> made me ask you like, what yeah. is art for Tony Allen? <laughs> well. Is it Stan Spurlock uh, with his kind t-shirt. I hope we're not breaking any copyright laws right now, but if we are. <laughs> Uh, um, Stan and I, we've, we've been great friends. We've been friends for a long time. And um, I do a lot of workshops. I go and visit him. He comes here. Uh, we paint together. Um, we're good buddies. 
and um, we went to China together, uh, uh, representing um, uh, the Pastoral Society of America. We were invited to go to China a couple of years ago um, to uh, on an educational program. That was really exciting. There was myself, Stan Spurlack, uh, Alan Picard, uh, Desmond O'Hagan, uh, Liz Hayward Sullivan, um, and uh, well, I've forgotten anybody. Oh, myself, yeah. <laughs> and um, Isabel Lim was that was our coordinator and she's a great girl she had, she she and her husband organized the whole trip and we were out there for about 10 days and we really got to know each other really well you know and and uh, we, we all sort of admire each other's work and we're great fans of of uh, 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 each 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 people's work um and of course from that minute onwards we became pretty close as, as friends and we we've, we've kept the uh, you know the camaraderie up uh, ever since. Stan is a bit of a joker, you know, he, I guess you've met Stan? Uh, uh, I had not, but I heard a lot of wonderful things. This oh. is from uh, IF 2017, Paint Around. So he had a t-shirt with a saying, art is hard, and the back of it is saying, unless you're Tony. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah. how to how to make art easy? Well, I tell you how to make art easy. Um, I, I'm still learning, of course. I've only been painting for 50 years, so it's it's <laughs> it's a lifetime's process. Uh, it, it and I paint. I have been painting probably for the last 35 of those years uh, on a daily basis. Uh, I'm a full-time painter, of course. Um, but in the early days, when my children were were growing up, and I had to put them through education. Not only was I a, a painter, but I also did, uh, had a job as well. And I would go out and work in the evenings and paint during the day and, uh, and put them through college. Um, but of course, as they, as they fledged and, and left the nest, then it was time for me to become a full-time painter. Uh, and of course, um, that has taken... I, I've been doing this now for 50 plus years. It's a long, long time, but I still feel that I'm still learning my trade. Uh, every time I go to the easel, every time I pick up a pencil, uh, I, I'm learning something new all the time. Um, and uh, I spent the first 20 years of my life as a watercolor painter. I just painted in watercolor. I still have my, my, my watercolor brush here from all those years ago. It cost me uh, uh, a week's wages, but, but it's lasted all these years. Um, Watercolor to me is the most difficult medium. Uh, I I heard that opinion among all the artists. Yes, watercolor is is hard, and if you have tendency to control it, like there is no control in watercolor unless you're very good. Yeah, well, I, I painted watercolor for for the first twenty years, uh, and I gained some some uh, some qualifications in that. I exhibit in London with the. A Royal Watercolor Society Art Club, which was not as a member there, but, but, um, uh, and then I then I sort of uh, matured and went into oils, and I painted oils for for many many years, um, but hey, it, it was somebody, one of my artist friends, uh, 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 thirty years ago, uh, um, gave me some of his homemade pastels. So he, that's how you started with pastels. I, indeed, yes, he 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 said. Hey, have you tried these things? I said, no, no. Well, have a little go. So I painted a couple of paintings. I had a gallery that I was supplying. I had several galleries. And I said to them, I've got something different for you. Oh, what's my... I said, I've got a few pastels. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Um, anyway, I, I took them to the gallery and um, they hung them on the wall and they sold. And they said, please, can we have some more? And I said, <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, and uh, basically my love for pastel then suddenly started because um look i've got a whole bunch of them here i i'll show you can you can you show them to us yes i'll show you the studio shall i yeah please you like to see that yes okay we all do. please press hard if you want to see tony Allen's studio <laughs> look, listen this studio is is uh, I, have, I built it six weeks ago it's part of the house it's part of my house uh, I'm still got planning permission to put some windows in. So it's, it's an ongoing, it's a work in process, but it's big enough. Uh, uh, and it's uh, at the moment, my painting studio, I have um, uh, four easels set up. 
um, and so I can I can go from one painting to another. Uh, I have all my plein air stuff all over the place here. Um, but I, I, everything in my studio, I should, let me just show you something. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, um, okay. These, the, these are just one of the benches. I've got two. Um, this is where I keep my pastel. Um, everything in this studio, everything in this studio is on me. <laughs> Everything on the uh, screen. Is, yeah, you you good. Uh, yeah, we can see you. Yes, thank you. So, so all the equipment, all the benches and the desks and the plan chest, the, the you know the flat files, everything is on wheels. Even the easels are on wheels. So I can move everything around if I want to change the furniture and if I want to put my my uh, uh, my library over that end, I can just bring it out, wheel it out. If I want to put an easel over there, I can move. So it's it's um, it's great fun because I can then I can move anything anything in this studio can go anywhere. Awesome. And and it's it's about thirty foot wide and it's about eighteen foot this way. So it's quite a big area to paint in. And at the other end of the studio is the kitchen area, and also I do all my own frame making. So I I have all the equipment. Uh, I've been making my own frames for the last 30 years. So, uh, so I, I, everything is handmade. I buy the, I buy the framing as, uh, as raw timber and then I prep it and I make, and I make the frame and then I hand paint and I varnish and I, and, and so, so. Amazing. So, so basically if you, if you buy yourself a Tony Alain painting, you know, you get the whole, everything's handmade, even the frame. <laughs> the only thing so I don't, Class. Okay, I need to jump on that. So, how can we like how anyone can buy one of the Tony Alain painting by the all artists and residences? Like, where can do you have online gallery? Um, yes, there, there. I have some galleries that I supply work, but but at the moment, of course, with the state of the the world at the moment, with the coronavirus, all the galleries are closed down. Uh, um, there, there are some online exhibitions, but uh, um, uh, painters, sales of my paintings are, are sort of zero at the moment. But that's okay; it doesn't matter. I don't paint to sell. I paint because I want to paint. So that's that's the way that's, I. Do. That's make you so good. So you would be painting if you wouldn't show it, and if you wouldn't sell it, right? Or artists need to show uh, paintings. Uh, well, exactly. There, there are one or two paintings. Um, that I've painted in the last 40 years. There are one or two that will never leave this house and never leave the studio. They belong to me. And in fact, um, my wife said to me the other day, I did, I've done some little fancy, some crazy little Pinocchio. Oh, look, there's one over there. The uh, you use it as your Facebook profile, right? Like you're more on a Facebook and we brought you to Instagram today. Thank you again. So you use it as your Facebook profile for a few days, little Pinocchio painting. Yeah. Uh, and so, uh, and she said to me the other day, don't you sell that painting that I, I want that for me. Uh, so I, I have to obey. I have to obey. <laughs> of course you do. Like happy wife, happy wife. Okay, so uh, people getting anxious to see your studio. I will stop talking and let you to show us around, please. I'm Thank sure. you. Um, well, first of all, um, it, the first of all, it's an ongoing process. On that wall, I'm going to show you where my office is. So I have an office area here. Maybe you can see that. There's an yes, office. we can see. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. yeah. And there's, there's all sorts of, there's nonsense up there. There's a TV up there, but it doesn't work. I don't watch TV. Um, and here, of course, is um, more pastels. So I have, uh, I have pastels on my, my right-hand side of my easel, and I have pastels on the left-hand side of my easel. Um, I have, um, I'll do this very slowly because I don't want people to go dizzy. Um, uh, uh, over here, I have a, a, a shelving rack, which I built. Uh, this has all my storage in, you know, the, the mediums, and I have sketchbooks. I have uh, 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 sketchbooks there, sketchbooks there, sketchbooks there, sketchbooks down there. I've got um, uh, pochade boxes and planning. 
I've got oil canvases. I've got uh, loads and loads of, these are great. I got loads and loads of these because uh, I make them. I make my own pastel boxes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. D um, but I do, obviously, I, I do have uh, 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 the uh, Hellman boxes, which I, which I, uh, I have four of them, but I have about six of my homemade boxes. Um, now, these little gadgets here, I want to show you these little things here. Now. Oh, uh, yeah, pastel. Okay. Now, there's my Hellman box. Okay. There's a Hellman box. There's one. But these little chaps here, these are good. I made these. These, these are my... These are my studio pastel holders, and so I can put them in there. I've made them to the exact size of a Terry Ludwig uh, a, a, a box. And you see, there's a Terry Ludwig. Yes. That, that fits in there, and this one is made for a unison one, and that fits in there. And here I have. Let me just turn this around. Here, this is my little pride and joy. I have. Um, all of these are unison pastels. Uh, let me just take you back just a bit. Oh, I can't take you back because I'm still plugged in. Let me just turn it around. Uh, and over there is my cabinet. I'll just walk over here. You can still see me. Yes, we can. Thank you, Tony. Over here, I have this unit here, which I made, and it has all of my papers and stock in there. Uh, some tools, we also need some tools. Big, big bench. That's where I do my frame making, cut my glass, put the frames together on this bench here. Let me put this chap back in. I've just put some paintings around the place just to brighten it up so that everybody can see them. But normally these paintings- Okay, be people saying clever traits of pastel you have Pastel Envy, so great collection. And uh, if you have to name one pastel uh, brand, what you have to use to the rest of your life, can you limit yourself to just one? Uh, oh my gosh. Um, uh, there is no, it's a trick question. So that, I'm just tricking you. That's a really tricky one. That is, um, um, for the rest of my life, that's a long time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, no, okay. If you have to pick a few, like what, what are your favorites? Ludwig. Unison. Hello, Terry. Hi. Um, and what else would I have? Ludwig, Unison. I have, I have just a small amount of Schminke because I use the Schminke for my highlights because they are very, very soft and very velvety. Um, and, so, and so I would use uh, the Unison and the Ludwigs and the Schminke. Um, I have a few Sennelliers. I have some Jack Richardson. Uh, I was fortunate enough to win a, a whole bunch of Richardson pastels. I've got them up there. Um, I've got loads and loads of neutrals, cool, cool greys and warm greys. Um, hey, art spectrum extra soft pastels. These they they wonderful and colors are. These these little fellows here, uh, they're really nice. Yeah, um, thanks to Tamara. At last, I have she introduced me to those. I'm so thankful. Um, I I, I just show you something. I, I have. I have Unison pastels, um, uh, which are that big and that big. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. It's uh, like for big paintings, you need big pastels. Exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I'm a great believer is when I, even when I paint in oils, even if I paint a little eight by six or an eight by 10, I will use a big, big fat brush. Uh, and, and if you're going to cover an area uh, uh, on paper, on canvas. If you need to cover a large area, you need a big brush and you need a big pastel. And so that's why I use, that's why I had those specially made. I'm, hey, don't tell anybody, but I'm a friend okay. of Dan Hershey, okay? He's the owner of Unison up here in Northumberland. And Dan and I, <clears throat> I got to see Dan. I did a workshop there and I said, Dan, could you make me some special large pastels? 
no problem, he said. But it will take, you know, many, many weeks to, to make them. I said, that's fine. And so he, I, I, I've made, he made me six of these big pastels. Um, sadly, I'm going to show you something. Sadly, um, I dropped one. Oh. Oh. But it's okay. Uh, I've still got all the little bits here, so that's not a problem. So you make a lot of uh, things by hand. Do you make your own pastels? I used to many years ago when I was poor uh, and uh, when I didn't have any money and when I was uh, a student, I would make my own pastels. It's very easy to make, of course. Uh, it's very easy. They're very easy to make. Um, and my friend and I, we would make them, we would have a pastel making session, perhaps a weekend, and we would perhaps make uh, 500 French ultra blue pastels. 500. 500. Yeah, yeah, because they're very easy to make. And we just go out and buy the pigment and all the bits and pieces, and we'd stand and we'd spend the whole weekend and we'd make out all these pastels. Huge amount of pastels. All, all blue. We'd buy some blue pigment, say some French ultra, and uh, we would make uh, blues one week, and then a month later we would say, "Okay, let's buy some, let's buy uh, some cadmium yellow p pastel uh, pigment, and then we'd make some yellows." You, you know, uh, well, um, maybe you guys don't, but I use a lot of primaries. I use an awful lot of primaries, um, and, and I use and I use primaries in my oils. Uh, because uh, because from the the three primaries uh, and white of course I can make lots and lots of colours especially in oils and so and and that uh, I've, and I've sort of taken that that with me when I moved into pastel so uh, that's why that's why my paintings are lots of reds and blues uh, and these lovely uh, uh, yellows and uh, mustard colours and what have you very seldom um, although recently of course now that I live in Scotland. Very seldom that I, I I use greens in my in my work, uh, but now now that I'm living up in Scotland, which, yes. which is very green, um, I'll be painting greens. Cannot wait for your green Scotland paintings. And uh, if you watched American TV, there is uh, Duncan MacLeod from the Clan MacLeod, and uh, also Outlander series was very popular. So. Uh, like haven't been in Scotland, but love the landscape from the distance, and now can see how Sonia Lane sees Scotland landscape. And I know last year you spent quite of uh, time in United States between IAPS, Arizona, Sedona workshop. You judged the show there. A uh, dear friend of mine, Christian Dubrovsky, uh, got noticed by you. And like I saw your painting there, what they were representing. So great stuff. Thank you for doing all of uh, your hard work for pastel community around the world. And like, this is truly amazing. So can you show us Monument Valley, what you're painting, uh, what you're working right now from your trip? Okay. Can, we, can we go? And you can unplug. I think we should be good. Like we have probably... 30-ish minutes left, so your phone should be good. You can unplug. Okay, I'm gonna, just going to turn this around slowly. And, um, and then maybe... I'm still here. I'm, I'm still... <laughs> yes, here. you are. How's that? Amazing. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I did say that last October... Um, we were selling our house and we were going, we were moving to Scotland and, and my wife, I said, I'm going to have, I'm going to empty my studio, <clears throat> get my studio packed up, ready for the big move. Uh, what do you want me to do? I need to carry on painting. And she said to me, well, I'll tell you what, <clears throat> you've got some time to spare. Why don't you go on? Why don't you go to a location that you've always wanted to go and go and paint? Well, I said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> um, and so, and so I, I, I flew into to Phoenix and I rented a car and I went to Monument Valley. It's a place where I've always wanted to go. Um, uh, I, I've seen so much work by Lorenzo Chavez 
of Monument Valley and Utah and all those wonderful places, the Red Rocks. And um, I spent some time with Terry Ludwig a couple of years ago in Colorado. I did a workshop down there, stayed with Terry. Uh, and he took me to um, a, a place called the, the Valley of the Gods or the Road of the Gods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they have Garden of the Gods, I think, uh, <laughs> by Denver. Yeah, everything uh, past uh, Rockies have some areas with Red Rock Mountains yeah. and Red Rock Canyon in Las Vegas is an, another example. So now you, we have to take you there for your new favorite. It's well, like I'm... just 20 minutes from casino. You don't have to go that far. Anyway, so, so I went to, <laughs> and, and, I, and of course I, I filled up uh, two sketchbooks. I've got one here. Um, let me just move that. I've got my sketchbook here. Uh, um, it, it's full. It's just full of Monument Valley sketches. These these are just um, these are just value sketches that, that I use ink markers, black big felt pens and pencils and what have you. Uh, and also, and up here, uh, let me just turn the camera once more. Up here, I have uh, just my little ink and gouache on this lovely toned paper. And again, this is just color reference, and so. And so between these two items here, this is the way I, uh, I generally work anyway. Um, I'm a firm believer in the art of drawing and calligraphy and sketching and thumbnails. Um, because I, I think, I think the, the, the uh, drawing and sketching is the, is the ABC of painting. It's the way to paint. Uh, um, and it, and uh, I spent all of my life filling up sketchbooks uh, of, of, of drawings and sketches on, on places on, that I've been on location. Um, and, and there are times when I'm in the studio and maybe I've got a, 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 you know, I've got a, a, a blank mind. I don't know what to paint. It's a, I just simply go to my sketchbooks and, and I open up a sketchbook and, um, and I can pick out, uh, in fact, I did it not so long ago. I, I, I picked up the sketchbook for Venice, 1987, I think it was, something like that. And, and I opened up my sketchbook from, from what's that? That's going to be 30 years ago, I guess. It's 33. I'm, I was born in 87. <laughs> oh, my God. That's 33 years ago. And, and I opened up my sketchbook and I saw some sketches. And because I had spent the time to observe, sketch, work out angles and values and uh, you know and to, I had memory recall I could see exactly I went back 33 years and I could see from the sketch the vision that I was there and so that's why I think sketching is very important I do use a camera of course uh, but of course I use the camera for for uh, 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 subjects which are fleeting which are like people walking past me oh oh look at that that got a click you know, that person, I've got to click that person. I need that person. Um, but generally, I, I think a sketching is very, very important because you take all the information into your brain, not into your iPhone. And so it is important to carry on the, the art of sketching. We seem to be losing it in this techno technological age. Yeah, it's so easy to do a snap, uh, snapshot and uh, like you think you have it, but you don't, and while you're taking all the pictures, you're losing time of internalizing that. Uh, well, not only that, uh, but but you see, the the thing is, these these uh, these cameras now and these phones and and the, I've got an SLR and I got these iPhones here. That, uh, you know, they are so smart now that they they take that they take the photograph and that they seem to have some sort of. A, a Photoshop software in there that enhances them, but but I've always found that that even in uh, the best photographs, and I've done and I've run many many workshops and seen loads and loads of images that have been printed out or I've seen on on people's screens, the shadows always look black and the sky and the clouds always look white and it's not like that in real life, it's just not like that. Look, I'm gonna I've been working on this, I've been working on this here. Uh, um, I tend to paint my pastel the same as the way as I paint my oils. I paint from dark to light, and I paint from thin paint to thick paint. 
And so it's like, a, and I do this with every subject that I, that I that it doesn't matter whether it's a still life or, or a figure study or a landscape. I, it's the same process I take every single time I go to the easel. I have, I'm pro, I reprogram myself over the last 50 years to paint dark to light and what I call fat over lean. So it's fat paint over lean paint. Um, and so you can see- I have, a, I have one technical question. Is the paper what you're painting on mounted? Is it mounted to your art? It's, no, it's not mounted yet, but it will be once I've painted on it. Okay, thank you. Yes, it'll be dry mounted onto onto archival foam board, maybe or, or gator board or something like that, and then it's solid. Then I can frame it. Okay, thank you, Tony. Carry on. Yeah, and so so look, all I've got to do now is the foreground. I've painted. I've also painted from the from the back of the painting forward. So so I've painted, you know, uh, 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 the uh, the silhouetted uh, monument valley here. I can't remember what the name of this, this funny little claw finger, I can't remember. Um, and, I've, and I've started to come forward. Now I'm ready to paint the foreground. And this is where the thick, juicy paint goes on. Look, I've got, I, I've, put, I've put the base layer on there. So I, I've got a few other colors here. Look, I've got my reference. I know that I want some highlights all along here to make all this pop out. Uh, and the, another thing you can't see, but another thing is, I squint through my eyes every time I paint. Even, look, I'm going to get up close. I look like snake eyes. Look, I sneak like this. Let's, let's all practice. It, uh, yeah, let's practice together. You, sneak, you see your snake eyes. You've got to squint, squint, squint. Like Clint Eastwood. <laughs> okay. So got now we got painting eyes, right? So you do that to see what? Like why are you squinting? You squint because it cuts out all the unwanted detail that you don't really want to put in. And, and, you, and it, make, it helps you work out the values all the time. Richard McKinley will say this. He's, he, he, didn't, he didn't invent it, but he said it. For, not the first time. Value, he said, yeah, value. Values do the work. Color takes the glory. But I don't think he invented that. I, I, I think artists from many, many years ago did. So, hey, look, let's, let's get this going here. Now these are these are Ludwigs. I like these because they're nice. Not, they're big, like big paint brushes. They're big. Like, that's a one-inch brush to me. Uh, and uh, now I can. I can now start to block in. I'm pressing quite hard. Still squinting. Stand back, see, squint, have a look. That's not bad. Still squinting, as you see. There, now. Now the next value. And I can see that Um, observation is very important. When I was in Monument Valley doing my value sketches and my little ink and gouaches, um, I was also observing all the time. Painting, painting to me is, I used to say 90, but I think it's like 75% observation, 25% application. So that's the important thing. My fingers are red raw because I do a lot of blending, you know, and do some soft edges. Uh, and, and I sort of blend as I go in these sort of areas here. Um, I tend to, to soften the edges on the edges of the painting, on the peripherals, simply because when I'm looking at a subject, unlike the camera, when I, if you take the photograph of the subject, the camera will get the whole panorama in focus. 
as a, as a, a human being with my eyes, I'm looking and focusing on the important areas. And what I'm focusing on that, all of this on the outside here is slightly out of focus. You know, it's slightly blurred. So that's the way I paint. I want to show you the viewer. I want to show the viewer how I see my world. And so that's the way I paint. Look, I get a lighter by me now because this is, I don't think that's the one. Let me find a better one. I think this one could be the one. Um, so this is where it's important to paint dark against light and light against dark. Look, I'll show you. Just here. Look, I just made that one mark. Uh, can you see it? Yes. And now, and now you see how it makes it pop and brings that. Look at, see the way that rock now. Uh, uh, Now, isn't that fun? Does that work? It's amazing. It's amazing. Thank you, Tony, so much. And uh, guys, right now there are comments in the bottom what may cover some of the painting, but after we record it to Instagram TV, there are not going to be comments shown. So when you watch a replay in a few days, that will be more visible. So keep watching now, but it will, be, it will get better. Fantastic. How long are we live for? Uh, we have 22 minutes uh, till Instagram cut us out or until you ready to leave. Like, so. Well, I just, I finished this painting, shall I? Can, uh, please. Oh, yeah. I, I am just recalling right now, I have your live demo. It was my greatest disappointment because I did not sign up for your workshop. I just did a demo. That was my biggest disappointment. And I remember we were competing with the room next door because they had like big applause and everything. And I like, why we have, we have to be in a boring room, right? Like, let's, let's make uh, people uh, happy. So how many paintings did you do in one hour? I think like it was seven and it was yeah. like two minutes left on your watch and you go, okay, should I do another painting? And you did two of them. And it was Venice painting. So back to what you said earlier, did it took you two minutes to paint a Venice painting? No, it took you like 33 years from your sketchbook of internal memory and 20% of application at this exact time. So I want all artists to appreciate that. Now I'm stop talking and let's uh, Tony do his magic. Thank you so much for watching us. Dasha Vibradok, Pastel Society of Nevada promoting our online exhibition and Tony Alain is finishing painting. Thanks. I make a mistake. Thank you guys. And yes, I went just over it. I had a question in the bottom of the screen. Uh, when we're going to record it and put it on Instagram TV, your comments not will be visible. So you'll be able to see better what uh, Tony is doing. And uh, he does sometimes live videos on Facebook. And uh, I think somewhere else I saw that. So just stay tuned when he's going to announce it. And uh, we're going to keep comments uh, so we can see who is there, what you can type your question there, uh, leave your kind comments. So this is why it's live, so we can have a feedback. Thank you so much. Tony, what are you doing there? Um, I, I, I'm just filling in. Uh, um, I can see it better on my little value sketch here. 
right in front of me, there was lots of tiny little rocks and that were, they were just casting shadows. And so I'm just, I'm just filling in just these little areas here. Um, again, I think we could perhaps add just a little bit of, oh, not that one, something a bit lighter than that. This one here, maybe. I'm still squinting. It's unbelievable. I do it all the time. Uh, I actually do it when I'm in restaurants. I walk around with my eyes half closed. I'm all the time trying to work out how to paint things. Um, even when I, um, if I'm out with my wife in a, in a restaurant, uh, um, and you know we're having a lovely evening, uh, and she'll say to me, "Do you know you haven't listened to a word I've said in the last ten minutes?" I said, I, "Oh, I'm. What, what are you looking at over there?" I said, "It's." I, I was just looking to see how I was going to paint that 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 vase of flowers, or, or you know, or that wine bottle. Um, but she's used to it. I mean, she we you know we've been married a long time, so so she's sort of going on. That's the way it is. Um, look, I've got this. When I first started using pastel, it, it sort of it opened my mind and my my whole world to pure color because you know when I see. Uh, um, you know, it's pure pigment on a stick, basically. I love this cute unison, so they're just so lovely. It, it's, and so, um, you know, I get a great buzz out of, out of putting, um, putting these, what I call the, the, uh, the lemon cake pieces on my pastel. You know, the, it's like the creme de la creme. I love putting, you know, the, oh, that's not, that's the wrong color. Let me find, now oh, here we go. A little bit of, look, a little bit of highlight just on the top of that rock there. Uh, we can just soften that edge and maybe just a, a hint there. Now you can see it's that dark against light all the time. It's very important uh, to get those to get those areas. Um, and of course um, when I went to Monument Valley um, I went round three, three or four times in the day. Uh, it's only like 18 miles. Um, but at different times of the day, of course, uh, you get different, uh, different effects, you know, which is quite, quite lovely. Um, what else? Oh, well, I'm going to put a little bit of, there's a little bit of highlight there in, in the distance. I know there's a little bit of green that needs to go in there. Um, I need to find, um, I need to find this, this, ah, there it is. This little bit of green, uh, which is, it's right in the distance. I remember it because the light was coming, always coming from this way. So I, I think I need to just. I just need to pop that little, oh, look, it's gone downhill. I need to. I need to get that bit of green in there. I think that's important. Hey, Tony, were you always so bold and precise with your strokes or did you achieve it with time and practice? That's a question from Vika. It's, I think it's, it's, again, it's all to do with sketching and drawing. Uh, um, uh, and because I've been sketching and drawing uh, on a, on a, almost on a daily basis for, for 50 years, I guess, it, it it's confidence it's confidence to make that one mark um when i look at when i go to the easel before i make that mark before i make that mark i see it finished in my head i see the starting point i see the end point and and it, it's only like a microsecond and i see exactly i it, i measure from there to there with my eyes i measure there there and i make the mark um, and, and it's again, it's it's having the confidence to make uh, to make the, you know these sure confident marks in the right place. Um, 
Now and again, I use a ruler. I use, I use the ruler, actually, at, right at the beginning of the painting, just simply to put in the horizon line, the base of the, of the mountain there. I just drew a line with a pastel pencil, just a white pencil, very faintly, just to give me uh, the, the datum of where the base of the mountain will be. Um, but but uh, my old art master, and I'm going back to when I was 12 years old, that's a long, long time ago. He, 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 he not only was he a, 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 a good teacher, but he was also a very good painter. Uh, unlike these days, or when my daughter went to college, they had uh, uh, teachers who, who couldn't paint, but they knew all the theory. Uh, however, uh, uh, I'm from, I'm a dinosaur, I'm from the old, the old stage. But my art master in those days said to me, you want to draw a straight line, you have to look at the page and you're going to imagine the point where you're going to start and you imagine the point where you're going to finish. And you measure and you say, left, right, left, right, do it. And he said, you practice that on a daily basis and, you'll, and after a bit of time, it'll come naturally. And so I guess I'm going to keep going back to my drawing and sketching. It is very, very important to 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 to, um, to keep keep the arms limber, to keep you know keep the keep the wrists going. If you don't, and you'll lose it. That's what I. I, I have one more question. Uh, what my board uh, made me ask. Anyway, uh, so you teaching something at your workshops what um, you need to make certain amount of marks on a daily basis. Can you elaborate on that? Certain amount of marks. Like uh, what's their exact amount of marks what you need to make daily? Oh, a um, hundred maybe. So hundred marks. And do you have a minimal amount of marks like uh, what's the minimum amount of marks need to be? Um, or well, I painted, I painted, I haven't got it here. It's hidden away somewhere. I painted a picture with uh, using 80 marks, just 80, eight zero marks from start to finish. No drawing. Uh, 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 I don't, I don't actually draw an outline uh, simply because if you go out in nature, if you look at your world around you, there is not a black line around everything. There's not a black line around that tree. There's not a black line around that house. There's not a black line around that cloud. It is purely shapes, patterns, values. Okay, I guess I need to screen more to be able to not see that black line, okay? Yeah? <laughs> I need to screen more to stop seeing that black line. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, what, I, I don't know what I'm doing. What am I doing? Um, You're finishing the painting, and we have, I guess, less than 10 minutes, no pressure. Oh, okay. Well, it's finished, really. It's, I mean, look, I, I, let's put a little bit of fancy stuff down there. I think maybe, that, see, again, it's dark against light, so, uh, and so let's put a little bit of colour. A little bit of broken colour there. Hi, Corey. Um, how many, we've got 10 minutes left, have we? Yeah, like 10 minutes. Oh, we could do another painting. <laughs> that would be amazing. But I need to ask you, like, why are we here and, like, are you finished? How do you determine what you finish with uh, that painting? Look, let's do another painting. We've got 10 minutes. That's easy. Okay, let's, let's do it, whatever you say, Tony. Should we? We should. Should we do another painting? I'm asking audience, like, let's... cards. Let's just do something quickly. And uh, um, um, you can still hear me, I guess. Yeah. Let's do something. I'll just get a bit of paper out. Um... Yes, we should. People think, yes, we should do another painting. Yes, yes, yes.
Well, this is easy. Look, we can, we can do it on a piece of paper. It doesn't have to be a big piece of paper. Is it your art? Look, this is Pastel Premier. Pastel Premier. Wonderful surface. How's that? Can we see that? Yes, if you just slightly move camera uh, to your right. Yeah, like that. That would be amazing. Yes, thank you. Okay. It, it, it's, it's years and years and years of drawing, sketching, uh, and, and just making my mark making. I think it's very important always very important. Mark making. A marker pen. What is the brand of the marker what you're using? That is Winsor & Newton. It's, it's called a Pro Marker. It's Winsor & Newton. It's a, uh, um, I can't even see it. It's a, uh, um, oh, I don't know. It's water resistant anyway. Okay. So Sharpie will work, okay. Okay, so, so let, let, let's. Um, over here, I'm just going to get um, that one, and maybe that one. That one, and maybe that one. So do you select um, pastels before you start painting or you're painting out of a big bar? Um, I, I generally, um, here in my studio, I know exactly where every pastel is because they always go back in the same place. And so when I started painting, like this little wee sketch here, uh, um, it, it's so easy to, look, it's, it's primaries, that's all it is. It's, it really is, it really is showing you um, how how you can make a painting um, And maybe something like uh, Thank you. People think amazing, love it, and a lot of hearts. And maybe just a little hint of this. Uh, 
And what else have we got here? Pastel pencils. Fancy little ruler. Your, Tony, your art is so unique and magic. Vika, Katya, thank you guys. <laughs> Compliments from the audience. Oh, but you see how, uh, uh, how you can... Um... Oh, that would be a guy there. We'd better put a hat on him, I guess. He needs a hat. <laughs> uh, what color hat? Now let's put him a, a fancy green hat. Um, oh, and some, uh, we need a bit of this, I guess. The least bit more, bravo. Wow. So you can see that, uh, you know, within a couple of minutes, uh, uh, it, it's, it's, it really is um, a thing like, let's put it this way. You can go to all the workshops that are available. You can go to a Tony Allen workshop. You can go to a Stan Spurlack workshop. You can go to a, a Christine Dabrowski workshop. Uh, a, 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 um, a Richard That's enough workshop. Every, you, go, you go to all these workshops, you gain all the knowledge, you know, and you can get all the books. I've got loads and loads of books there in the library. Again, I get all the technical knowledge. I get the DVDs. We've had DVDs and CDs in the past. And yeah, I've seen step-by-steps. Wow, this is great. But actually, without practice, 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 all of that amounts to nothing. And so it's, it's important to keep practicing. I, I, that's why I paint every day. I, I paint every day because... I'm addicted to painting. I've got, you know, it, it's, it's something that I have to do. I paint, I breathe, so I paint. Um, and, and so it's very important for me to, to spend my time, uh, uh, even if I just sketch, look, that, you know, a simple little sketch like this. Can be, One minute. It can be easily made in, in a couple of minutes and on location, you know, there's nothing fun. You know, it's right in front of you. So after all the years of practice, 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 um, and squinting, and observation, uh, hopefully, we start.